first of all, I want to show you something in this rope sitting outside. Do you see this mess right here and this mess right here? This gets down to what is called rope management. This is very poor rope management. It's absolutely not okay when you are coiling a rope. Actually, coiling a rope is not the thing to do. When you are trying to store and stash your rope, you don't want to coil it. You want to butterfly it. Here's what a lot of people do. They take it, they give it a twist and fold it in. Give it a twist and fold it in. And they're making this really beautifully neat, nice, tidy coil of rope. And you do have to give it a 180 degree twist every time or it really snarls up. But now when I go to pull this thing out, I end up with all of these in my rope. This is not good rope management. That will hook a toe, that will catch on something on the roof. That's a problem. So you don't want to coil rope. You want, if you want to bunch it up like this, you want to do what's called butterfly. And a butterfly fold is like this. You take it like this, take it out and back. And out and back. And out and back like this without giving it any twists whatsoever. And by doing this butterfly fold like this, now when I throw the rope out, no twists, turns, or loops in it at all. It goes out nice and straight. So butterflying is absolutely the way we want to manage our rope when we are putting it away, when we're, when we're trying to consolidate it to keep the, the work site clean. Let me show you a little trick too. When you're done butterflying, leave yourself out. Once I have my butterfly done, I'm going to show you an easy way to uh, tie this up to store it. Make sure you've got at least three, four feet of rope hanging out. We're going to wrap it around back on itself, two, three, four wraps. Then what you want to do is reach through the, the bends on that. You want to pull that through and you want to fish it around like this. Just pull that through like that. Now. It's nice and neat and tidy. There are no coils in it. There's no kinks in it. When I want to take this guy out, I grab that fold that I made right there. I pull that through. And now I am ready to toss this guy out again. And uh, with no kinks, no eyes, no loops, no catches in the thing, I can throw that out again. And everything is peachy keen. I hope that so now, using those principles, let's come back to this polyolefin rope that we have. And I want you to see something about the polyolefin rope. This is what's called laid rope, L-A-I-D. It's made with a reverse twist technique on the fiber. It, some people call it twisted rope. This is actually not the best rope for lifelines. The preferred rope for lifelines is this style, which is called kern mantle rope. Kern mantle rope has an inner core of twisted yarns but it's covered with a sheath on the outside, which also gives you a fair amount of the strength in the rope itself. And this is smoother, it's less prone to wear from your rope grab. Uh, it's, a, it's a better style of rope. So Kern Mantle is preferred over this laid type of rope. But here's what you want to do before you stuff this stuff away. A little trick you can do with your bucket. Cut a hole in the top of your bucket. Feed the rope in. As soon as the rope gets inside, you're going to tie a barrel knot on the end of the rope. That barrel knot is big enough so that it won't pull back out of the hole. Once you get to the end of the rope, the whole bucket lifts up. And you know, uh-oh, I'm at the end of the rope. The whole bucket is lifting up. Then what you want to do to feed the rope in, you don't want to do any coiling. Whenever you're stashing rope in a bag, in a bucket, in a bin, you push it in straight with no twists. And it will come out exactly the same way it went in with no twists. So before we stash this in the bucket, we need to straighten this rope out and get rid of all these twists and coils in the rope, of which there are plenty. Students who use this bucket last here, push straight in. No twists, no turns. I'm pushing straight into the bucket. Now, if you were to look in there, it's going to look like a mass of spaghetti all laid on top of one another, but it's okay. It's not getting twisted. I am laying rope on top of rope below, and I keep continually just building up layers of rope, and when I pull it out, it will pull out smoothly. It won't catch on 
loops that are above it. It won't catch on kinks and loops that are built into it. So that is how you stash rope in a bucket, in a bag, or in... Okay, here's another option for creating a vertical lifeline. And it's my preferred option. This is, like I said before, called Kern Mantle Rope. A smooth, woven outer sheath, very tough, very rugged, good tensile strength wrapped around an inner core of yarns. Now, one point about whether you're using the safety bucket rope, uh, laid twisted rope, or whether you're using a current mantle rope, OSHA requires that all vertical lifelines be made from synthetic materials. However, there are synthetic materials and then there are synthetic materials. When you're looking at repetitive use, and repetitive loading and unloading, the best synthetic materials from the top down, you're going to start with nylon at the top, and as you work your way down into your polyolefins and your polypropylenes, you're getting in your polyethylenes, you're getting into rope that's not real good quality, it doesn't have the same performance as a nylon or a polyester rope. This is, I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm betting that this is either nylon or polyester or a mix of both. Good quality rope. Now, the thing about this rope as a lifeline, there is no double locking snap ring on the end. There is no fall arrest device on the end. So we have to learn how to create. In addition to there being the two different construction methods, be it either kern mantle or a laid, played, a twisted rope, Ropes also come in two other categorizations. One is dynamic, one is static. That has to do with their tensile elasticity, uh, their, their elongation, if you will, their, their, their bungee cord effect, if you will. Dynamic rope, if you put a shock load on it, it will stretch and bounce back. And it, it's called dynamic because it stretches fairly far. Static rope, of course, everything will stretch a little bit with a shock load on it but it doesn't stretch much at all. Static rope is preferred for vertical lifelines. So my preference, Kern Mantle, static rope with proper minimum breaking strength. Minimum breaking strength on a rope like this for a vertical lifeline should be 5,000 pounds. Now let's talk a little bit about that minimum breaking strength and what some people refer to as safe working load. Minimum breaking strength is something that occurs in the factory test it in the factory. They'll take a bunch of samples of rope, they'll pull on this one till it breaks, pull on that one till it breaks, pull on that one till it breaks, and the one that breaks with the least amount of force, they measure those forces that it takes to pull that and snap it, that's the minimum breaking strength for that style of batch of rope. That's different than the safe working load. Minimum breaking strength, that rating on the rope, is brand spanking new, fresh from the factory. As time goes by, every time you bend a rope, every time you drag a rope, every time you put a force on a rope, some of the tiny fibers in here are breaking. And as time goes by, the minimum breaking strength for this rope erodes and goes down. Therefore, we have something called safe working load. Safe working load depends on the style of rope and the materials, varies anywhere between 10% and 20% of the original minimum breaking strength. That means safe working load is somewhere between one tenth and one fifth of the minimum breaking strength. So if this rope has an original minimum breaking strength of 5,000 pounds, the safe working load is probably only 500 pounds. That's how it would be rated. That's important to keep in mind. We're going to come back to that in a minute. Now, let's go back.